Hey guys, um, today I'm going to be doing a book haul, which is different from anything I've ever done, but today my dad took me out for my birthday, which is on Tuesday, my birthday, but he takes me thrifting, um, or he has the past few years taken me thrifting to all the thrift stores outside of Seattle, so all the suburban thrift stores, which are often a lot better than the thrift stores in the city, and some of them are a lot worse, because there's a little, there's a lot of small overpriced thrift stores that are really good in them. But today, I focused a lot less on clothing and a lot more on home stuff and books, and I picked up a lot of books. I also visited the Half Price Books in Redmond's, which is easily the best Half Price Books. Holy crap, it's so good. The one in Seattle, I love. It's one of my favorite stores, but the, the deals were so good at the Half Price Books in Redmond's, and I was very happy about that. I picked up nine books today from thrift stores and Half Price Books. Which is really exciting, so I'm going to show you them. <laughs> Alright, so the first book I picked up was The History of Andre Clothes, um, which is just that. It's just the history of underwear, pretty much. So it dates um, all the way from the medieval age to. Or it dates all the way from the middle. Medieval, medieval Age to World War II. This book was published in... I have no idea. I think fairly recently. Yeah, it was published in the 90s. Which is good for a fashion book. And it's actually a very wordsy book, which I didn't expect. Um, but the pictures are cool. There are not very many. They're all pretty old pictures that show or at least pictures of old things. So, like nightgowns from a long time ago. Yeah. I don't know. I'm really excited about this book, so. And the next book I picked up was this book called Bikinis, Bell Buns, and Little Black Dresses, 70 Great Fashion Classics, which is a, a very generalized book about vintage fashion or just classics. And I usually don't um, gravitate towards such general fashion books, but this one is actually like very cool. And a lot of the images are from the 60s and 70s, which those are my two favorite eras. Um, I have a lot of fashion books, and I do have a lot of general fashion books, so I find that with some books where it's like, here, 50 great fashion icons, I'm like, I know, I know who all these people are, I probably have a book on them. So I usually gravitate towards more specific books on uh, just one specific subject, but this one is so cool, I'm so happy about this book. The next book I got, I got at the St. Vincent de Paul in Bothell, which is one of my favorite thrift stores. They have the best furniture ever. I almost bought a dining room set today, but then I was like, I own one of those. I mostly just wanted the chairs. So this book is the Fred, and Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers book, which I'm really excited about. Look how cool this cover is. The cover, the colors are so nice. The art, the font, it's all very good. Um, so if you don't know who Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers were, they were two, a man and a woman who made a ton of films together. In the 30s, they made nine films together and they danced in all their films. They were amazing dancers and they worked very well together. So this book is all about all their films and like their relationship. They weren't together, but they made the films together. I, I mentioned that. Um, and I'm so excited about this book. You might recognize the two names, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, if you have watched Cafe Society, which is Woody Allen. Um, I think it's his latest movie. It came out maybe a year ago. It has Jesse Eisenberg, Blake Lively, Kristen Stewart, Steve Carell in it. It's a very good film about, or movie about, a New York Jew who moved to Hollywood and then ended up moving back. But they mention Ginger Rogers in that, book, or in that film all the time. 
Okay. And then... The next book I got was $2 from Half Price Books because the Half Price Books in Redmond's has a very good clearance section, which I think the one in Seattle definitely lacks. Um, did I already say the title of this? I have no idea. So it's Fashion in Impressionist Paris, which is pretty much just an, an analysis of Impressionist art that takes place, or like French Impressionist art, and the style in it, which is super cool. I'm excited about this book too, and I'm really happy that it was only $2 because I probably wouldn't have picked it up if it were much more. Well, I'm very excited to read this. Okay, and then the next book I, the next book I picked up was Mr. Rosenblum Dreams in English, which is a non-fiction, er, which is a fiction book, and I never read fiction. Like, I, I definitely. This is my bookshelf, and almost all of these books are non-fiction books, with the exception of a few fiction books. But I definitely gravitate towards non-fiction books, which I feel like isn't necessarily true for a lot of people because more people like to read about made up things than history, but I love history. But this book is actually a fiction book. Uh, it takes place in World War II though, <laughs> in Germany and then England. And then I picked up another fiction book, which was $3. And I don't actually know it. It's called Bur Burial Rights, which is, uh, this book is about a woman who is charged with two murders of two men and then she hides in a farm in Iceland waiting for her execution, which I thought was pretty interesting. And since it was only $3, I just picked it up. I liked the cover. I thought that... And the next book I picked up was this book on Gianni Versace, which actually is not really about Gianni Versace. It's just a Versace book. So designers in the 90s, and I think that some do still do this in any time before the 90s, they would make all their collections into books, which I think is really cool, but now people don't read books as much. They read... They can just look up collections on the internet. Okay. Vogue.com slash runways. You can look at any runway collection from the past 20 years. No. past 10 years. But before Vogue runways, you could... Er, before Vogue Runways, designers would actually make their collections into books, and this one is Gianni Versace, some Italian words, Primavera Estate 1992. So, this is the cover, and then it's basically just everything that came out, or everything that was part of that 1992 collection, and I definitely struggle with showing this, but I love books like this. I think they're so cool, especially because it doesn't have words, but I think what's really interesting about this book is that you can look through what Versace was doing in 1992, and it's just not I that far off the from what they're doing now. Versace is one of um, the, the brands that I think stay most true to their roots, and season after season you can tell that it's Versace, but they're still, they're doing different things, but you can definitely tell that it's Versace. So yeah, I'm excited to try to find a place for this book, because my bookshelf is clearly up for Alright, now I only have two more books. I'll start with this book. 
which was three dollars and i love lucy book i love lucy is i wouldn't say my favorite show or even one of my favorite shows but i used to love i love lucy i used to watch it all the time in the mornings on that old people's channel and hallmark hallmark used to play it i don't know if they still do um, but I love Lucy is a, just a really great show. This book basically just showing the larger books is quite difficult. Um, chronicles how they made every episode and basically just a page about every single episode. This is a lot less focused on Lucille Ball and more focused on the actual show, which is cool. Um, I have another book about Lucille Ball, which is huge, called Lucy After Movies, which um, talks about, I love Lucy, obviously, because that was a large part of her life, but also talks about her, um, her studio and her life and just everything regarding Lucille Ball. So, yeah, I, I think Lucille Ball is an amazing woman. And then the final book I got, which I think is the most exciting book to me, just because I've never seen this book, and I got it for a really great price. So, this book is about Jeffrey Bean, and if you don't know who Jeffrey Bean is, he was a designer who started in the early 60s, maybe 61 or 62, and he designed in New York, he's an American designer, all through the 60s and 70s. He won a lot of awards for his designs. Um, his brand no longer exists. Uh, I don't think it was very prominent after the 60s and 70s, but Jeffrey Bean is, he passed away in 2004, when I was four. Um, so, we have a lot of stuff like this, and then, ah! This is just not convenient. I love Jeffrey Bean. I really wish that the brand was still happening. But yeah, this is a beautiful book. It also has a lot of words. It talks about Jeffrey Bean as a designer and Jeffrey Bean's company. So yeah, I'm incredibly excited about this book. It was only $8, which is a really good price because a lot of fashion books are so expensive. But I definitely think that if you can, not buying books new is the way to go. You can find such good books in the thrift store and most of them are under a dollar or under $5. Unless you're at like half price books, but those books are always still pretty inexpensive which i think is definitely the way to go if you can um so that concludes my book haul this is really really weird and i don't know if I'm gonna this again. actually i do because Sheila and I are but, yeah um let me know if you want to see some books on my bookshelf, because I have a ton of fashion and vintage history books, vintage history books, very redundant sentence. I have a lot of history books and vintage fashion books. Uh, so yeah, alright, over and out, subscribe, check out paperlimousine.com.